Guys, I want you to understand, so I sped up a lot of this video. There's a lot of it I could have cut out, but I kind of wanted you to see the kind of time that goes into this. So when people are like, oh, why does it cost so much to modify a knife just to do anodizing and things like that? There's a lot of prep that goes, especially if it's something that requires uh, polishing and things like that. So just to, to show some of the, the, the time consuming parts of it, I, I was at the shop for eight hours and all I did was refinish a blade and then I goofed off and did some of my own stuff. Uh, it takes that long sometimes to do stuff. So you're just kind of seeing, you know, what it takes to do some of these things. Uh, I don't see how some people do mods so cheap. I just don't see how they're paying for their time. So I just kind of left it long. I'm sorry if it's a long video, but you know, just, just to step in, I'm watching the edit and I've, I've sped things up, but I just wanted to throw that in there so you kind of understand why all that stuff is still there. All right, guys, so I brought you all up to the shop with me. I'm um, getting ready to set up the grinder here. I'm working on Bobby D's, Mr. DeMarco's knife from Knife Junkie. Uh, and I am going to, just now I'm gonna get the grinder set up so you guys can watch that. And I'm gonna grind off a small amount of material here and then we're gonna refinish the knife. So I'm gonna, reinforce these lines so they're easier to see for me where Bobby wanted this. I need a straight edge. Well, not really, kind of just, there we go. I can stay within the lines. I colored good as a kid. Okay, so just so I have a little bit more to, to look at. So what we're gonna do is we'll get this grinder set up. Let's see, can you guys even see that? I'll bring it down a little bit. We'll get this grinder set up here and then I'll start grinding. But in the meantime, if you're wearing headphones, here comes the music. Tool rest off and getting ready to switch this for belts and direction. So let's go ahead and get this out because I need the other tool. Not necessarily, I said direction, but I'm not switching it for direction. I'm just switching platens and tool rests. So are we good? Put this on. But now I gotta rotate this. I need a flat rest. And I'm gonna need this set up. I might speed up some of this grinding. I don't know how long it's gonna take and I don't know how loud it's gonna be. It all depends. You never can tell. So, I am gonna borrow some of their belts. I will just replace them. I have belts in my car. I will bring them in a couple of belts. So these belt, these grinders are nice because they're really easy to swap out belts, swap out platens, swap out tool rests. Just makes your life a little easier. Hang on just a second, I'll be right back. Had to get a little bit of safety precautions set here. So let's get this lined up here. Now, Okay, so I know this can make a lot of you cringe, but this is a safety thing. Yep, took the edge clear off of that. Just because I don't want that, sh it's still sharp enough to cut me, but it will cut me a lot less badly if I do it this way. So let's go ahead and get this set up. We're gonna go at a fairly low speed so we don't add much heat to this. I'm gonna warn you guys right now, I'm gonna pause so that I have a checkpoint. This is going to be loud-ish. I'm gonna adjust this bell.
So that was quick, but the hard part's not the actual grinding. The hard part is making it look like it came that way, which could be challenging. So I need to go up a couple belts. This belt is still basically brand new. I will set it over here where it came from because we did not do that much heavy duty grinding. Now we're going to clean up that with 220 and then we'll clean it up on scotch Bright as well. I am actually gonna turn on the ventilation in here because it is not that I need it for the uh, dust and things like that because I'm not generating much dust, but I definitely need it because it's hot in here. So it's probably gonna get loud. Ventilation's not too loud. So what we're gonna do next, we go up in grit and we just refine that scratch pattern we've already put in. The lower grit, lower speed, less friction. We don't want to burn up Bobby's knife. All I'm doing is just cleaning that scratch pattern up so that it has a softer appearance and looks like it did when it left the factory. So you can see, I took, I took the material off and brought it up to a, a more forward aggressive point. I don't know if that's even in focus, guys. So hang on a second, I gotta get everything set up for the next step. So the next step is for me to scotch break this to give it a softer look so it looks more like the actual, actually I may not need to, I'm gonna touch it just a little bit just to see. That is the nice thing about these nitrogen steels. They do take the finish very easily. So we're done with that step. I will bring you guys back because the next step is I have to do some masking. So I'll bring you out there and we'll look at the masking. And I'm sorry, this feels weird, but I'm holding a tripod in my hands. So I'll bring it out and I'll show you how I mask this stuff off. So I don't have to mask everything off because of the finish we're going to put on it. The finish we're gonna put on it is going to be very fine and clean. So even if I don't mask the spots where the pivot was, the fact that I'm refinishing it won't really affect it. But however, what I don't want to do is affect the dimensions of the lock face on, that's this radius on the blade. So it's just a matter of, and this is the time consuming part, is prepping everything and masking and things like that. If I was doing the handles, there'd be more masking involved. Um, but basically all I'm gonna do is take a little bit of liquid tape and I'm just gonna touch it to the lock face. And I'm just simply going to let that cure completely so that when I blast, when I blast it, it does not come off. And while I'm tumbling it, it does not come off. So uh, that's gonna take about 30, 40 minutes. I'm gonna try and heat cure it. That sometimes helps. But usually the best is just to let it sit for a couple hours and move on to something else. I got some other stuff I'm gonna do. I'll bring you along. I got those gifts from um, Alex. Uh, we are going to also anodize the scales on this Olamic 247. So just a little content. I haven't been in the shop for a while. I haven't shown you guys any actual work. We'll do that. So I don't have my Hobbit with me. So it's gonna be a little strange videotaping this. I'm trying to get you in a position where you can see exactly what I'm doing. Let me see if this comes up anymore. It does not. Uh, so this is, this, just keep in mind that this video is not going to be perfect because it's just me. So what I'm doing right now is I have my Olamic Wayfarer apart. I told you I was gonna do it and you can see it's got a stone wash finish. I'm gonna tumble this just a little bit. Let me see if you can see. Can you see that this is a stone wash finish? or yeah, pretty much a stone wash finish on a rock pattern. I'm gonna tumble it for a little bit, including the backspacer, and I'm gonna do a two-tone anno. So I'm gonna do blue on this and bronze on, I'm not sure if I'm even gonna tumble this. We're gonna see, I may not tumble it, but I'm gonna do blue on these parts that have a little bit of shine on them and then 
bronze on the hardware and we're gonna see how that looks because I can always go back and start over. So I'll bring you guys back when I'm getting ready to put stuff in a tumble. Right now all I'm doing, I'll, actually I'll take you back when I start polishing the hardware and stuff like that. Because all I'm gonna do is just, ooh, this might be bronze too. Yeah, this is probably gonna be bronze. So I'm gonna polish the hardware, backspacer, bronze, that blue, pocket clip, blue. So I'll bring you guys back when I get ready to go back there and actually do it. I'm just putting the hardware in uh, a fitting, or a, a, a platen so that I can hold on to it. So I'll bring you guys back in a little bit. So anodizing is one of my favorite things. Let me turn you this way so I can make sure. Anodizing is one of my favorite things to do in the shop, period. On knives, I love to anodize. I like the magic of watching those colors come up after you've prepped something properly. Unfortunately, there's a lot of times that doing anodizing requires that I do something that I truly hate to do in the shop, which is polishing. So hang on a second, let me get this started. Do the easy part first, it's always the hard way. Hardware pounds is up easy because there's not as much surface area and you can get in there and really get it done easily. Larger pieces require, like this backspace, they require a little bit more work. Some, some knives you can get away with just doing the tops of the hardware and you don't have to focus as cleanly on everything. But on this Olamic, the hardware isn't recessed into the scale. They sit flush, so they stick up above. And so you're gonna wanna make sure that all these little dome head screws get polished on all sides. I can see that there's a couple here that have got a dull, dull side on it. So it's just one of those things you wanna keep an eye on while you're doing this if you're doing polishing. The other nice thing about doing hardware is if you have a if you have a fixture like this that they all screw into, you can do all of your screws at once as opposed to one at a time, like trying to hold on to them if you put them in the shoulders and hold the shoulders with a, if you put them in a standoff, screw them in a standoff and hold the standoff with a pair of pliers. You can only do one piece at a time and there's much more chance that you're gonna damage something doing it that way because you're holding on to a piece with uh, a pair of pliers or a pair of vice grips. Now, this is my personal knife, so it's not that big a deal if I don't get it completely polished because I always come back. But if I was doing a customer's knife, I would be extremely, extremely careful of how I was doing this. Not that I would damage anything, but just to make sure that I don't uh, leave something undone.
guys, I didn't actually mean to stop that, but let's take a look at what we got going on here. We have got it polished, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it is still hot. But we're gonna go anodize this, which is my favorite part of this. I'm not gonna try, this is the worst filming video, quality video ever. I'm not gonna try and bring you guys over so you can see exactly what I'm doing. We've already did a video, you saw me do it with a, uh, uh, another knife. I'm just gonna show you the end results. Plus, I'm not want this video to be too long because I also wanna show you what I did to Bobby's knife because there's still more work to do on that. So, I will bring you guys back after I anodize all this stuff because I still have a lot of cleanup on these parts to do. So guys, as you can see, my, my backspacer came out exactly like I wanted, but we have an issue. The pocket clip did not, this didn't come out. And I think what I'm gonna do is I am just going to finish this the same way I'm doing Bobby's knife. So I'm gonna put it in with the blade. It may, I may finish it today. It may tumble overnight. I don't know, we'll check it. We'll give it a couple hours, we'll check it. I'm gonna go get something to eat and take a good hard look. I know the colors aren't coming through, but this is a really toxic, shiny, toxic green. I'm keeping this piece out. Uh, but let's go ahead. We'll get uh, Bobby's D, Bobby D's knife thrown in with these parts. Uh, I'll take you back. I'm getting ready to blast his blade. All right, guys. So this is the next step on Bobby's knife. I've already got it in the blast booth. I am going to blast that knife. If you ever bead blast or bl sanding blast anything, I'm going to tell you right now, the best course of action is to do the sides first and then the flats. That way, when you do it, you don't have any... I can't ever get this right. You don't have any areas where the blast has come across and, and changed your surface finish on what you're doing. So I'm gonna blast this real quick. Uh, it's gonna be loud, I gotta turn the vacuum on for the dust buster, the, d the dust collector. So, let's take a look in on this. So I blasted the entire blade. You look at it, you wanna try and look for shiny spots where you might have missed any blast, where you don't have an ink, where you might have an cons inconsistent finish. There's uh, some fingerprints on it. So we're gonna go wash this off and we're gonna put it in. The tape held, the whole point of taking so long, because it is now, it's been three hours since I first put the, elect the liquid tape on this blade. The tape had enough time to cure that the bead blast did not blow it away. So my watch died. So I am currently not really, well, it didn't really die. It's just not wanting to uh, work and play well with the, uh, with the phone. So the next step is we are going to put these parts into tumble. I'm gonna blast these parts and just start fresh with these. And these will have a really nice finish on the titanium. I'm uh, probably going to tumble, tumble them overnight, so this may be the end of this video. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay here for a few hours and check on it from time to time. If it's progressing quickly, I might be able to finish it today. If not, we will pick this up tomorrow, uh, probably around noonish. I will come back up and check on them. So let's get these parts taken care of. Get the stuff tossed in to uh, to tumble, and we'll take a look at how everything comes out in a few hours. So all the parts are in the tumble. We're just gonna let it rest and see what's going on. I got a leak in that tumbler. I'm gonna have to take it apart and see what's wrong with the lid and gasket. Well guys, it's almost six o'clock at night. I've been here since around 10-ish, I wanna say. 9, 30, 10. Bobby's knife is done. We've done the finish, the grind. I cleaned it up so it matches. Nice and square, nice and true. The grind, the, the finish on it looks the same everywhere. 
So, uh, I think it looks pretty good. We're not doing anything with handles. And so that you guys can see it because I didn't bring you back for it. Hang on just a second, I'll go grab the other one. I did a really fine tumble, real similar to what I did on Bobby's knife. You don't have to tumble titanium near as long as you got to tumble steel. Uh, so did that, polished green backspacer, green hardware. I left the blade B for right now. I don't like the blade finish particularly, but it's okay for right now. Uh, all the hardware, I know it's hard to see. Let me see, maybe flipping it around to look. Better. I don't think it really looks that much better, but you can see the green and the blue. It's really hard to capture. Anodizing is hard to capture on film. I'm happy with the way it looks. It's going right back in my pocket. So guys, before I tell you that I'm putting stuff in the corners, I'm gonna put stuff in the corners. You guys know I'm gonna put stuff in the corners. I did one other thing for you guys. I started this knife several years ago. Um, I forged this out. I was not happy with it. The guy that helped me do it uh, really didn't let me do any of the work. Uh, he basically did all the work and I, I got to hit it a couple times with a hammer. He was one of those guys that couldn't let you just do your own thing. So I had it, I brought it up here to the shop. I did a full convex grind on it and guys, it is super sharp. I'm gonna be giving this away to one of you, the top tier members, the premium tier members. Hang on a second, let me get a piece of test paper and I'll cut it and show you what it looks like. So I basically ground this to what would be considered a convex zero, I guess. Let me get in the way of this fan so that I can actually It is very, very sharp. It is a perfect grind. Absolutely not. It's the first time I've ever tried to do this. There are a lot of flaws in this. I have never done a full convex, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out. And hopefully the winner will be too. It is super, super thin, but it's a full convex all the way up. And it is razor, razor, razor sharp. I just cut my thumb in. It is sharp, really sharp. Like kind of scary it almost bit clear through my finger now so guys that's it i'll put some stuff in the corners uh if you like the videos give them a thumbs up if you don't like them give them a thumbs down remember there's a join button down below the premium tier will be getting this i've put a lot of work into this i put about six hours of work in this today just in this because everything else kind of was just sitting um so yeah guys take it easy i'll see you in the next video